touch the microphone, it makes a weird noise and everybody's very quiet. <laughs> Welcome to Columbia University's College of Dental Medicine, our class day. This is a very special moment. I want to welcome all the, the parents, the important others, family, friends, and particularly this truly excellent class of 2010 to this special moment. I think this is the, the high point of, of four years in many ways, because this is our opportunity as a faculty with the support of numerous organizations to recognize the excellence that exists in our student body. This class in particular, if you are an award recipient, you are special. When this class entered this institution, you had the highest DAT, dental aptitude test scores in the history of the school. As you are going out the door, you have the highest percentage of classmates who have attained a match, particularly in a specialty, 50%, 38 of 76 of the people in this class have matched specialty programs. Uh, that is also a, an institutional record that you have attained. So in spite of us beating on you for all four years, one way or another, you have been very special and we very much appreciate the professionalism and the caring that you have shown for your patients and for us, the faculty, while you were students here. Um, pausing for this important moment is very important and we're happy to do it with you. In fact, it was uh, the wisdom of our dean and yes, deans can have wisdom, the wisdom of our dean, Ira B. Lamster, to separate this from the diplomas ceremony so that each, in its own unique way, is recognized as the major achievement it is. Uh, and that's why we do it this way at this time. Um, without saying much more, I would like to introduce the dean of the College of Dental Medicine, Dr. Ira B. Lamster. Well, good, good afternoon, and it's really a pleasure for me to welcome all of you here today. Uh, this time of year uh, is, is wonderful because it's filled with many very important events, and, and clearly graduation um, is specifically what I'm referring to. This really is a rite of passage. Traditionally, here at the college, this had been divided up really into two ceremonies. The first was the college graduation, which will occur on Monday morning, and then the university graduation, which will occur on Tuesday morning. As you heard Dr. Davis say, we decided to break off this ceremony as something different. So what we'll do next week is really celebrate collective achievement. And what we're doing here today is celebrating individual achievement. The curriculum here at the College of Dental Medicine is very demanding. And all of the individuals who are going to be called to the podium, I think, should be celebrated by us all for what they've been able to achieve. Uh, let me just comment just very briefly about these sorts of events. Um, these are the sort of times, these are the sort of events, I think, that stay with you, have stayed with all of us for a lifetime. In, in some ways, you, you, you remember the day you were married, you remember the day you have a, your child, your children. Uh, but you also will remember your, your college and your dental school graduation and certainly these ceremonies. And we certainly hope you enjoy the next three or four days because they really are very special. So my congratulations to all of you who are receiving awards and certainly congratulations to all of the family members who are here to celebrate with us. Thank you. Now I'd like to bring up someone who has uh, been special to all of you, has, was special to me as one of my earliest and frankly most demanding professors, and that has not changed one iota, our Vice Dean for Academic Affairs, Dr. Letty moss Salentine. I want to wish you a very uh, hearty welcome. I'm glad to see you all. and I. Really, every time when this happens, I, I say you have arrived in 2006, and for you it was four long years. You finally made it. And when you look at my perspective, you say, hey, this is very different. I look at you and say, are you already qualified to graduate? <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, ser seriously, now, I, I know you are. Uh, these have been some intense years for you. You have gained a lot of knowledge. You have got amassed an, an enormous number of facts. You have become competent in many clinical procedures. 
and you have become a member of the dental profession, in the sense of being a true professional. And that's quite an achievement. To do that all in four years is, is, is pretty darn good. Congratulations to all of you, and enjoy this particular event. There are two individuals who you will hear from today. They were selected by the class, and they uh, represent this class and have done so in special ways. The first is Dr. David Alfaro, who has served them as their student government president. David, please come up. Thank you. Uh, Deans Lamster, Moss Salentine, faculty and administration, family and friends, and of course my fellow classmates. Thank you for being here today as we celebrate the many achievements of the class of 2010. It's hard to believe that four years have passed and here we find ourselves marking the conclusion of one journey and the beginning of another. Each of our lives have had different courses and directions and we all arrived here in separate ways, but for these brief past four years, we have battled it out together in these infamous lecture halls and clinic floors. Now we sit as one for one of the last few times in a chance to recall everything we've been through. Regardless of how we arrived here, each of our relationships with Columbia began the same way, with an interview day where we had the opportunity to mingle with potential classmates, professors, and administration. It was then where I'm sure many of you decided that Columbia was the place for you to begin the next stage of your life. My interview was an excellent experience. I was hanging with Mikey and Sam, and Dr. McManus was just joking with everybody at the table. I thought to myself, can it really be? Is everyone here as outgoing? And then I continued off to meet with Dr. Mitchell and Dr. Jenkins, and I was sold. Columbia University was where I wanted to attend dental school. Now we know that the College of Dental Medicine has a reputation of excellence. We all know about how awesome we are, and how great our scores are and how many great residents we graduate, and so on and so forth. But it all begins with admissions. The admissions staff has done an amazing job of selecting the finest students with the best personalities. This is demonstrated in the achievements we all have obtained as a class, but more importantly, it's reflected in our class dynamic. It's imperative that the attention to the selection process continues even without Dr. McManus at the helm. His departure is truly a great loss to this institution but we all wish Dr. McManus the best in his new endeavor at the ADA. I'm not gonna chronologically recap our last four years because they're permanently seared into our brains. We have fought, clawed, and battled our way through these tough four years, and here we stand, victorious as a group, proudly receiving the awards that we have merited. While we'd, we would all like to think that we did it ourselves, and we have earned these amazing results merely due to hard work and perseverance, our successes would not have been possible without the tremendous mentorship that we have received from day one. At Columbia, we have had the great fortune of learning from leaders in academic and clinical de dentistry. Dr. Moss Salentine exemplifies everything that a true educator should be. She set the standard of expectation for our class and set the bar for the quality of instruction that students at Columbia deserve. Dr. Yuan, he made learning fun and taught and lived with an energy matched by no one. Even though he's no longer with us, his memory and spirit will be carried on in each and every one of us who were wise enough to take his wisdom in. Oh, and there's Dr. Hadavi. He's not here today, is he? He of the golden handpiece. While we slaved away with hatchets and chisels and burnt ivory and teeth to a crisp, with him peering over our shoulders at our soup bowls and our swimming pool preparations, Many of us feared his criticism, but he taught us how to crawl and then how to walk in a manner that would even make G.V. Black proud. In the clinic, there are too many amazing faculty members to be named individually. Again, we've been truly blessed to work with you, and it is taken for granted how hard you work to provide the highest quality dental education possible. The best faculty members expected more out of us than clinically acceptable. While it's frustrating at times to have to redo an impression or to send back a crown because the margin was a, open a fraction of a millimeter, it was all in the pursuit of excellence. During one night clinic, 
I was walking with the professor to show her my restoration, and she asked me how I thought it looked. I said, oh, clinically acceptable. Another professor overheard and said to me, clinically acceptable is not acceptable. You are better than that. And she was right. We are better than that. In looking back at my education at Columbia, I do have to say that, the ex that at the excellence expected of its students must saturate all aspects of the educational process. We've received an amazing education, but in the spirit of those who taught me best, there's always something that can be fixed. It would have been ideal to spend all of my time learning from the amazing faculty we have, but I guess sometimes we have to spend it looking for a torque wrench or PVS or trying to find out exactly how we're gonna get out of here. We can all agree that these are minor inconveniences, but this is an Ivy League institution, and we are Ivy League students and expect nothing short of excellence, just as it is expected of us. We've seen the improvements over the past four years, and I know that the lessons that we've learned as a class and as an institution will lead to an even better, flawless experience for those to come. Remember, clinically acceptable is not acceptable. Class of 2010, I, I know these are gonna sound like closing remarks instead of opening remarks. When, when I arrived in New York with Aniko and Chanchita, I had no idea what to expect. All I knew was that Washington Heights was hot, busy, and dirty. <laughs> but right from orientation, I realized that I had begun something special. I'm proud to have been educated at such a storied institution. But now, as we finish up, I'm even prouder to have completed my education with you guys. We've been through a lot. We've become the best of friends in the hardest and most stressful of climates. And I can only hope that the end of our DDS does not mark the end of our friendships. The best memories I will have of New York will not be of the Empire State or of the Brooklyn Bridge, but will be of putting my napkin in the air, seeing Carlo perform his first extraction, which happened to be on a 256 burr that was stuck in Joey's head, <laughs> watching Scott consume more Red Bull than the human kidney can possibly process, and all of the endless pleasant experiences we shared, both academic and social. I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity because to me, the recognition of my peers and friends is one of the highest honors achievable. I know that we will, all res we will enter residency in full stride and will once again rise to the top of our respected programs. I hope that the future brings you all the success and happiness you deserve, and I can truly say that getting to know in each and every one of you has done nothing but make me a better person. Class of 2010, let me I tell you, I'm going to miss you, and I wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you very much. Now you see why they picked him as their student government president as well. Um, with that, we will now move on to the actual presentation of the awards to this class. These awards are selected by, in certain cases, if they're divisional excellence, and that's what we call our departments, divisions, they are selected by that division. If it is a general award of merit or achievement, it is selected by the entire fourth year class committee, all of the course directors in that year. So these, these awards are consensus awards at some level. I'd like to, at, uh, <clears throat> at this time, bring up Dr. Moss Salentine again. I am standing in awe of the person that I'm about to give an award. Uh, it is very rare to find somebody who almost every course honors. And in her case, uh, she in fact had honors for every nine out of 10 courses, which is absolutely incredible. And I am I'm truly impressed. I would like to call up Mary Ballard. It's our pleasure to have with us today an individual that is the president of the New York Academy of Dentistry, uh, an organization which is uh, 
designed to recognize professionalism and to encourage the interaction of us in the profession here in the New York area. The president of that organization is here to present an award, Dr. Henry Chalpin. Thank you. I'm very pleased and honored to be here today on behalf of the New York Academy of Dentistry. As Marty, uh, Dr. Davis had said, um, we are an organization that has always stood for the highest levels of ethics and professionalism. And uh, as such, we are very proud to be able to present this uh, award for exemplary professional conduct uh, every year. The, the concept of professionalism is a very, very complex one. And many books have been written about it. And, um, and articles have been published about it. And there are people who could talk about professionalism for hours. So for someone to have um, distinguished himself at such an, at such an early part of his career, um, to exemplify this type of professional behavior is quite remarkable. For many of us, this is something that where, where professionalism is cultivated over a period of many years with the uh, help of mentors and role models and such. So um, I'd like to present this award and call up Dr. Jeremy Zaniga. Um, you should be very, very proud to uh, uh, receive this award. And I, in addition, I see you also um, have received an award for clinical excellence as well. So uh, the whole package is certainly the type of in individual that we would love to see in our academy one day. So I wish you uh, the very best of luck. And congratulations to all of you. Thank you. At this time, again, I'd like to bring forth Dean Lampster, who has several presentations. Thank you, Marty. I actually have the, the pleasure of, of making four awards. Uh, the first three uh, uh, I'll begin with, and then we'll take a little break. Uh, the first award is the Ella Marie Ewell Award for Distinguished Service to Fellow Students. The, the, the individual who wins this, who has been selected for this honor, is the current president of the SGA. Uh, I won't go through his resume and all that he's accomplished, but I think you can see by the remarks he just made why he's very deserving of this. David Alfaro. Thank you. The next award is the College of Dental Medicine Leadership Award. And this is presented to a student who demonstrates exemplary leadership throughout his years at CDM. This individual was president of the American Student Dental Association, American Student Dental Association from 2007 to 2008. Uh, again, his extracurricular activities are too numerous to mention. He will be graduating on Tuesday actually with two degrees, a dental degree from the College of Dental Medicine as well as an MBA from the business school. In looking over his record and some of the comments that have been made about, about the student, he was described as uh, having great integrity, being very accomplished, being very caring. It's a pleasure for me to present this to Wayne Stevens. I also have the honor of presenting the Research Excellence Award. The student who was selected by the fourth year class committee for this award uh, actually won first place at the Hinman Symposium competition in which dental students from all over the country come together and they share their science, but they actually compete for an award. And uh, this student won first place a, a few years back for a, a work that he did with uh, Dr. Srikula Raghavan, and the title of his presentation was Identification of Beta-6 Integrin Cytoplasmic Domain Interacting Proteins, Armando Rattano. Where's Armando? I want you to indulge me for a second. Um, I'm going to ask two groups of students to stand. These two groups of students have already received their awards at uh, special occasions. 
But the uh, thing I'm asking you to help me with now, if there are eight of them in this first group, which is the Omicron Kappa Upsilon, essentially the Phi Beta Kappa of dental school, the top seven or eight students in a class, if there are eight of them, let's see, times 200 IQ points each, that's 1,600, isn't it? I'd like to show you about 1,600 IQ points now. Would you please rise when I call out your name as a member of OKU? David Alfaro. Mary L. Ballard. Erica Park Chang. Whitney Dion Florin and her family. <laughs> Chun Hick Kim. Ryan Turner. Stay up there. Kimberly Beth Solomani. And Scott Jason Solo. Congratulations from all of us. Thank you. 30 years ago this year, we began a very special event with help of the New York State Dental Association, now its foundation. In honor of Percy T. Phillips, who was a Columbia graduate, who was also a president of the New York State Dental Association, who was also a president of the ADA, and a, a, a very staunch defender of education and the practitioner together, a combination that we wish we had more of. Uh, as part of honoring him, we annually have a visiting professor come here for two days, present a memorial lecture, and then we have two student scholars selected from eight candidates, and those two scholars do their own presentation from the body of work of the visiting professor, and those presentations are published in our New York State Dental Journal. I'd like to recognize the two people in this class who served in that capacity and did a superb job as Percy T. Phillips student scholars. David Alfaro, stand up there. They don't recognize you yet. And Nicole Madison Lambert. Thank you and congratulations again. Um, I'd like to call the dean back up for a very special award to a third year, the only one in this group. You know, I forgot to mention something. <laughs> I think we're very fortunate here to have many, many excellent, many excellent students. And, and one of the true assets of this dental school are its trainees. So I want to congratulate you all again. And not only do we have excellent fourth year students who we're presenting awards to today, but we also have excellent third year students and second year students and first year students. However, at this event, we only present one award to a third year student. Uh, and that's the New York State Dental Foundation Dean's Award. And as listed in the program, it's for a third year student who uh, demonstrates academic accomplishment, committed service, and membership in the American Student Dental Association. The person who was chosen for this award is going to be the president of the American Student Dental Association in the 10, 11 years. So not only did we have the president of the American Student Dental Association for 07, 08, but we're also having that, uh, that uh, uh, Columbia Dental student hold that position for, for 10, 11. Um, there's a lot I could tell you about the awardee. Uh, let me just say that not only has he demonstrated commitment to organized dentistry, but his academic performance has been outstanding. And I'm really here in two capacities. I serve on a, as a board member for the New York State Dental Foundation, also obviously as the dean. It's a pleasure for me to present this to Corwin Hopke. I just said to Dean Lampster, I don't think, you know, I've been around at this a while, I don't have any awards that nice, let alone the money that's in that envelope. It's frightening. It's frightening, Corwin. Congratulations. Uh, at this time, we'll move forward to the Divisional Excellence Awards, and I'm very pleased to call Dr. Lynn Tepper, our Clinical Professor of Behavioral Sciences. It is a pleasure to present this divisional award in behavioral science to Lorelei Perez, 
who has both personally and professionally distinguished herself by achieving excellence not only in all the behavioral science courses that she has taken, but also consistently uh, being excellent and proficient in her interpersonal patient communication skills, as well as this personal gift for her, which will continue her education in psychology. Lorelai. Next, I would like to introduce to you Dr. David Albert, our Director of the Division of Community Health. Wow, these are two awards, which it's a great pleasure to give out today. Um, there were many, many candidates and many people over the last year, in the last few years, who have worked very hard on public health and health services research. So I'm very impressed with these two candidates. The first award is to Jeffrey Nicolini. And Jeffrey uh, has a sense of health care as a right and sought to fulfill that belief by working to lead, and I mean lead his class, um, in providing care to the indigent. A clinic of student volunteers on 124th Street is not a place that you typically find students working on their own. But yet Jeffrey uh, and his classmates uh, should all be complimented as well, work there. The clinic will continue after his departure. It has he has inspired many. It is an honor to have had Jeffrey as a student. And congratulations on your award, Dr. Nicolini. This is the Divisional Excellence Award in Community Health. The this is California, don't pay attention to the footwear. <laughs> Sandals, huh? Sandals. In New York. Okay. Dude. The next award is for Gina Cucciaro. Gina is an exceptional student with insight and understanding of public health that impressed many in the department and division. She developed an initiative to evaluate seniors at a community health center. The project was her own initiative. She developed the survey, handled the research system in Rascal at Columbia, which daunts many faculty members, and she did it with uh, a plum. Her dedication to the project was evident in her many sessions in the clinic, interviewing adults in between patients that she had in the clinic in a busy senior year. She would always be at lunchtime sitting in the uh, clinic, sitting with seniors and interviewing them. Um, she was assessing them to see why they use dental services or don't use dental services, a very important issue with older seniors. She has the skills to evaluate and work in health services research and also the concomitant passion to translate her work into a real, real benefit to uh, the population. And I hope she continues her work in public health and health services research. So Dr. Kujiara, it has been a pleasure to work with you. And come on up. The next individual to come here represents the endodontics division. It is Dr. Jack Levy, Associate Clinical Professor of Endodontics. There is a parable that tells the following. Two ships were near land, one leaving and the other entering the harbor. A large crowd was cheering the outgoing ship and giving it a, a, a hearty send-off. Scarcely a person noticed the incoming vessel. A wise man watching this scene commented, Rejoice not over the ship setting out to sea, for you know not what destiny awaits it, what storms it may encounter, and what dangers it may undergo. Rejoice rather over the ship that has reached port safely, returning all its passengers in peace. We applaud all the graduates, 
for having reached the harbor after a difficult educational voyage. In preparing to dock, we wish them health, happiness, and satisfaction in their new careers. On behalf of the Department of Endodontics, I'm pleased to present the awards for excellence in root canal therapy. <laughs> to Kiwan Lee, for two years of having reached the highest excellence in endodontic, clinical endodontics, I'm proud to present this award to you. To this data, Arjona. This data has been a member of the area of endodontic concentration for two years. She helped as a group member to publish two research projects. She attended a group um, a table clinic in Atlantic City and presented her table clinic on research and she's been a very committed uh, student in endodontics and I'm very proud to present the American Association of Endodontics Award to Lisneda Arjona. Next, I'm pleased to present someone whom you've all probably heard about if you are a parent or an important other here. Uh, he is presenting a number of awards. He is our chair for the section of adult dentistry and the director of one of the divisions in that section, the Division of Operative Dentistry. He is a Columbia alum and somebody that uh, everybody appreciates, Dr. Richard Lichtenthal. These awards are for excellence in restorative dentistry. Uh, I'm always amazed how students can come into the school and learn this intricate talent so early and so well. It's a testament to their perseverance and their skill. And it's also a testament to the courage of the faculty to allow them to go into the clinic to do that on patients. And the combination seems to work out. If the, are there any third year students here? Yes. Um, these individuals who win these awards and, and come into the clinic and perform excellently do so because they know what it is they're going to do when they come in. They prepare for what they're going to do before they come in. They are prepared at the chair, and they can proceed with their technical skill with ease and have the faculty there to guide them at the end when they need it. These are exceptional people. All of our students perform well clinically. These are excellent. The award for divisional excellence in operative dentistry goes to Erica Park Chang. <laughs> Erica is going to be a pediatric dentist right here at Columbia Dental School. The Academy of General Dentistry, the Outstanding General Practitioner Award, goes to an individual who worked in the clinic as though he had been there his entire life. He is talented, he's mature, he has a terrific work ethic, and we're going to keep him here for as long as we can. He's going into the AEGD program here at Columbia Dental. Maxime Cerebro. <laughs> 
We're going to lose this individual to uh, Harvard, but uh, he'll do very well there. The, the Academy of Operative Dentistry Award goes to Jun Hick Kim. The American Academy of Dental Practice Administration Foundation Award is uh, for a very special individual. Um, she's all things to all people. She moves in terrific circles. She gets her work done. She perseveres. And I'm very proud of Mina Catherine Kim. Stay here. Uh, Mina is also the winner of the American Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry Award. That uh, award was a tie. Uh, the, American, the second American Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry Award goes to Kiwan Lee. Kiwan is going to stay here as well. He's going to do the AEGD program here at Columbia Dental. A lot of implants are placed in our clinics every year. And uh, the one who placed the, the best, judged by our faculty, the American Academy of Implant Dentistry Award goes to Richard Pantic De La Rosa. Richard is also going to a graduate program. He's going to be a pediatric dentist. He's going to Montefiore Hospital. <clears throat> Another award for John Hick Park, the American Academy of Osseo Integration Award. John Hick. I'm sorry. John Young. John Young. What he said was gone so hot me back. Um, you're staying here. Yeah. <laughs> Pick another picture. <laughs> Jenny Young is going to do the prosthodontic program here at College of Dental Medicine. The Quintessence Award for Clinical Achievement in Restorative Dentistry uh, uh, is going to a very special young man who uh, does everything for us, does everything for the members of the senior class, did everything for the faculty to help them deal with the senior class. It would have been very difficult to get through the year without the assistance of this individual. Um, he was a wonder in our clinics. He, he was always cooperative. His patients loved him, and uh, so do I. Uh, the Quintessence Award for Clinical Achievement and Restorative Dentistry is Jeremy Zuniga.
Okay, I'll be back. Thank you. Well done. We will ask you back. Now I'd like to call up here Dr. John Gerbic, representing as the director, the Division of Oral Biology. Well, what is oral biology? Uh, it's really the basic sciences which provide the foundation for what all the clinical disciplines you're going to see the other awards given out for. And it's, it's excellence in courses such as anatomy, oral histology, microbiology, and immunology. And we give out two awards. The uh, first award is the Divisional Excellence Award in Oral Biology. And the recipient of that award is Dr. Flavio Qatar. The second award is an award given by the American Association of Oral Biologists, and the recipient of this award is, Do is Dr. Mary Ballard. I'd like to bring forth someone that, uh, again, was one of my professors, although somehow he looks younger than I do. I don't understand. Dr. Lewis Mandel, Associate Dean for Extramural Hospital Programs and Oral Surgeon par excellence. Uh, thank you all. Of course, it's an honor for me to present these awards. I'm going to be presenting seven awards. Uh, for the Division of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. One of the rewards that I'm going to get is I think I'm going to have seven pictures of myself taken. <laughs> well, that's, that's nice. At any rate, the uh, first award for the Divisional Excellence Award in Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery goes to S Stavan Patel. Who's, uh, where is Stavan? Here is, Here is an individual whose ability, both academic and technical, was recognized not only by us, but by his receiving an outstanding residency, LSU in Shreveport, Louisiana. It's an excellent residency. So they recognize his ability just as we did. Thank you, and congratulations. Thank you. Wait, oh. Put that in his hand. Wait, wait, you've got to take another picture. You have the award. Thank you. Thank you. Not so long. Congratulations. Okay. The second, I would say it together. Paul can tell me. Come on up, Paul, wherever you are. Paul, Paul, Paul has received two awards, both related to pain. American, American Academy of, of Cranial Facial Pain Award and the American Academy of Oral Facial Pain Award. So you get two, does he get two plaques or you get an individual? Oh, okay. Congratulations, Paul. Thank you very much. This is the second award. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Please, Dr. Mandel. And y'all mentioned it, Paul. The, the next award, the American Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons Award, goes to Mary Ballard. I need not say anything about Mary. You all have heard about it from Letty, Dr. Letty Salentine. So where are you, Mary? I didn't recognize you, Mary, when you came up the first time. Your hair was down. <laughs> it gets confusing. <laughs> and I also get a kiss. <laughs> I knew he was going to uh, and then, of course, we have the American Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons Award for dent Dental Implants. And that goes to Whitney Florin, wherever Whitney is. We're, we're, fortunate, we're fortunate to have Whitney stay on with us for six more years. That's her punishment. And uh, she'll be with us as a resident in oral maxillofacial surgery. Whitney? And now we call up Mary again, Mary Ballard. Oh, she's got two more. Oh, my, Mary. 
<laughs> All right, Mary, come back. You get two awards. The American, geez, look at this one. American Dental <laughs> Society of Anesthesiology, Horace Wells Award in Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. Mary Ballard, stay right there, Mary. And then you also get the award, the New York State Society of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons Award. So you get two of them, we'll get two pictures of them. <laughs> two kisses, that was so Hold on, hold on. Thank you. Now I'm pleased to introduce a professor about whom you may have heard glowing reports, <coughs> our professor, associate professor of oral radiology. Get it, glowing reports. Dr. Steven Singer. I am most pleased and honored to present the Divisional Excellence Award in Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology to Robert Weinstock. Dr. Weinstock. There he is. And the next award is the American Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology Award. And that goes to Paul Cantelmi, not only for excellence in the clinic and in the classroom, but also for outside of the classroom where he took a project upon himself and wrote a manuscript which was accepted for publication in Quintessence International coming up this summer. Paul, come on. I'm pleased to present to you, representing the Division of Orthodontics, Dr. Satichandra Pai, Assistant Professor of Orthodontics. Okay, the first award is for Divisional Excellence Award in Orthodontics to Jacqueline Fisher. The second award is for the American Association of Orthodontists Award for Bansari K. Modi. Now, near and dear to my heart, and I have to compliment the next speaker on his restraint when all these future pediatric dentists have been given awards. He's been very calm about it. Representing the Division of Pediatric Dentistry, Dr. Shantanu Lal, the Director of the Predoctoral Pediatric Dentistry Program. Guys, this was a great year for predoctoral pediatric dentistry. As you may know, we had the highest number of applicants and also the best match results ever. This speaks highly of the sheer talent in this class, but it also makes it harder to recognize just one or two individuals. Nevertheless, for all her passion and hard work in pediatric dentistry, the Divisional Excellent Award goes to, and I believe I can say this, Dr. Bernali Roy. for his tremendous work ethic, 
and efforts with the Academy. The American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry Student Award goes to Dr. Richard De La Rosa. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to bring up Dr. Daniel Roisman, Assistant Clinical Professor of Periodontics, representing the Division of Periodontics. <clears throat> I would like to congratulate the entire class of 2010 on all your accomplishments. Certainly a job well done. The level of education you received here at Columbia University with all its dedicated faculty and staff is second to none. Having now been part of three different dental institutions, I can tell you without any hesitation that the philosophy and the level of education that is provided here is the one I'm most proud to be associated with. Your road to this point has been long and I hope rewarding, but your journey as dentists and as future leaders in the field is just beginning. You'll have good days and you'll have bad days, but I just want you to keep in mind that uh, your worst day sometimes is someone else's hope for a best day. To the Perrier residents out there, and I'm proud to say we have six, uh, I'd like to wish you luck in your respective residencies. And soon you will discover, like the rest of us, the periodontal paradox, uh, which is patients who have the deepest pockets have also no money. So it's not only <laughs> endemic to the population in Washington Heights. Lastly, I want to clarify, because there has been some confusion with why I stopped signing the completion forms. <laughs> <clears throat> I had no idea what they were, <laughs> and I hope you don't tell Dana, I still don't. <laughs> On behalf of the Department of Periodontology, I would like to present the first award, Division of Excellence, and award in periodontics to Dr. Scott Salo. The second award goes to, uh, called the American Academy of Periodontology Award, goes to Joseph Haynes. <clears throat> the third award. Uh, Northeastern Society of Periodontics Award appropriately, appropriately goes to someone who's going to Texas, and that's uh, Miles Mason. <laughs> Last one. Last award. Quintessence Award for Clinical Achievement in Periodontics. And the award goes to Jeffrey Nicolini. Did we get the shoes? <laughs> I'd now like to bring back someone you have already met, but certainly deserves a recall, Dr. Lichtenthal. If any of you know what a case completion is, case completion is one point in your complex cases and if you don't have prosthodontics in the case, it's not, you're not gonna get a complex case. You can argue with Dr. Evangelitis all you want, but you're not gonna, maybe 0.125 <laughs> cases, but 
never a, a case. Prostodontics is difficult. Prostodontics is done in stages. Prostodontics takes a long time. It involves laboratory work. It involves getting things checked. Prostodontics is hard. The end result is terrific if it's done properly. Prostodontics is difficult. We argued a long time to select the awardees for in prosthodontics. Uh, there are so many good clinical students in this class. Uh, but the award for divisional excellence in prosthodontics goes to John Hick Kim. John Hick. John Hick, as I said, is going to do a prosthodontics program at Harvard University. The envelope, please. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you get it? I think so. <laughs> Got a photographer there. I'm not sure what this means, but it's very significant. <laughs> this is the Hanau Best of the Best Prostodontic. Award. I don't, I don't know if they're referring to the student or to the Hanau articulator, <laughs> but it's the Hanau Best of the Best Prosthodontic Award goes to David Alfaro. Thank you. The International Congress of oral implantologists. There actually is an international congress of oral implantologists. They meet annually and uh, vote on things. Uh, the, Sullivan, the Sullivan Shine Award presented by the International Congress goes to Ray T. Jones. Uh, we'll wait for him. All right, sit down, sit down. Yes, right. I'll, I'll give that to Ray personally. We're going to give it to Ray. The New York Academy of Oral Rehabilitation, there is actually also a New York Academy of Oral Rehabilitation. Um, they meet several times every year and talk about uh, rehabilitation. <laughs> The, America, the New York Academy of Oral Rehabilitation Award in removable prosthodontics, removable prosthodontics, means you can take it out and put it back in at your leisure, goes to Victor Chuan. Made some excellent removable dentures, I must say. Get a little closer, so it's all right. It's all right. Okay. The New York Academy of Oral Rehabilitation uh, also gives an award in fixed prosthodontics as, as uh, compared to the removable prosthodontics. They get one for each. Uh, this they call the Eugene Rothschild Memorial Award in fixed prosthodontics. Um, I didn't know Eugene Rothschild, but I, I would imagine that he was he excelled in, in fixed prosthodontics. There was a check in his honor in there. And because of the the long and distinguished career of Dr. Rothschild, there is a check. That goes along with his award, which makes it really valuable. <laughs> so the, uh, the New York Academy of Oral Rehabilitation, Eugene Rothschild Memorial Award in Fixed Prosthodontics goes to Simon Baylor. It's my pleasure to recognize and ask to come forward uh, the director of the Division of Oral Pathology, 
to present Divisional Excellence in Stomatology Awards, Dr. David Zegarelli. Okay, uh, in the division we administer basically three courses, uh, one in oral pathology, roughly 15 hours in length, one in oral cancer, about the same in length, 15 hours, and then a large survey course, roughly 70 hours in the junior year. We force the students to memorize or learn one way or another about 1.73 kilobytes of information a lot of facts. And the top three students are the ones I'll be giving awards to. The first one is the Division Excellence in Stomatology, and that goes to Jacqueline P. E. Fisher. The second award is the award from the American Academy of Oral Maxillofacial Pathology, and that goes to Emily C. Driesman. And the third award is uh, from the American Academy of Oral Medicine, and once again, we'll be asking Mary Ballard to come up here for this one. <laughs> in pharmacology, and a superb prosthodontist. And many of the people he cared for were the people who were down in the theater district. And he was notorious with his pharmacologic background for having available a free full bar in the front of the office so that people were quite relaxed when they sat down in his dental chair. But he was a superb clinician, uh, a very tough, demanding individual. And there is an award in his honor every year. And this year, the person who won that award based on not only superb performance in the pharmacology course, but also research done, and I'd like her to stand and be recognized, Nguyen Kung. <laughs> Congratulations, Nguyen. Now I'd like to bring forth uh, someone who has added a je ne sais quoi, something that, that was really special here, is probably the person mentoring the most students in research in the institution these days, and uh, is just a splendid addition to our faculty, Dr. Jeremy Mao, Senior Associate Dean for Research. There are many reasons I'm extremely pr proud of the recipient of Quintenson's Award for Research Achievement. If I'm here to uh, provide you with all the details of her research achievement, we'll be here till next Monday. So in the interest of time, um, it's a Great pleasure to present the Quintenson's Award for Research Achievement to New Ying Kong. This time I'd like to call back to the podium our Vice Dean for Academic Affairs, Dr. Moss Salentine. And it's going to be no surprise in this uh, event where we honor so many qualities in our graduates that the uh, highest academic achievement award, which is uh, uh, given by the Alpha Omega Dental Fraternity, Again, we had to pick Mary, uh, Mary Ballard. Dr. Ballard, would you kindly come up again?
And now for an award that recognizes someone often from one half of our group, but not always, I'd like to bring to you Dr. Carol Kunzel, Associate Professor of Community Health. Although I'm here today to honor one of you, uh, let me extend my sincere congratulations to all of you in doing very well done. Uh, I'm delighted to be here today to present the AAWD Eleanor J. Bushy Memorial Award. This award was established to recognize a senior dental student who is an AAWD member and has demonstrated outstanding leadership and academic excellence. The award this year is to be given to Dr. Jeannie Olivo. <laughs> the reasons for Jeannie's uh, selection are many indeed. In fact, at one point, I had prepared a list of all of her many accomplishments and worthy activities, but I'm going to shorten it simply to say that Jeannie has been active in a variety of community events, student organizations, as well as in research efforts. Indeed, all of this put together in one package certainly represents excellence in academics, leadership, and professionalism. Congratulations, Jeannie. I'm very pleased to present you with this award. Thank you, Carol. I'd like to just introduce you to someone who's in our audience and to make note of the fact that the New York State Dental Association has a gift for each of the seniors. No, it is not a new car, please. We pay dues to these people. But I'd like to introduce Dr. Jeffrey Senzer out here who represents them. Uh, he will be out there to meet you and greet you and present you with these gifts when we are there for the reception at our conclusion. Also, I do want to thank Delta Dental who has sponsored that reception out there. And uh, I hope you appreciate what, what they're trying to do for us as well. It is my pleasure at this time to give the next several awards the first is the American Student Dental Association Award. Our students are so intelligent that a number of years ago, they voted as a group almost unanimously that all students should belong, and it would be part of what we collect from them for activities fees, to the, Amer to the American Student Dental Association. You know that we have one president that received an award today. Wayne Stevens was his predecessor two years ago in receiving an award as well today. This award is for service through that organization to someone who has represented our district extremely well, who will be going uh, for periodontics advanced education to NYU next year. And I'm very pleased to call forward Amanda Huxtein. When I was a student here, Dr. Louis Mandel and Dr. George Minervini uh, were the co-chairs of oral surgery in this institution. Uh, George Minervini, in, who this, in, in whose memory this award is named, uh, was the true raconteur. He was always at the senior dinner dance, sort of the MC for the evening. He uh, had a sense of humor for an oral surgeon, right, Louis, that was extraordinary. Uh, and just a gift of gab. And he knew more jokes than anybody I ever knew. He didn't even need local anesthesia. He got the patients laughing so much. But in his honor, we have an exemplary professional demeanor award, which goes to a pediatric dentist who will train at Montefiore Hospital, Richard Pantig De La Rosa. The International College of Dentists recognizes leadership. And one of the people in this class, and I think it was most evident to those of us in attendance at the uh, senior farewell dinner dance, when he got up and said a few words, 
that this is a, a gentleman who is a, a quiet leader, but is a very clear leader and is an important emotional part of this class. He is headed for an oral, a residency in oral pathology here at New York Presbyterian Hospital. It is my pleasure to give the International College of Dentists Leadership Award to Eugene Coe. Pierre Fouchard was a French dentist, je ne parle pas le français, oui, c'est très bien. And he is sort of the father of modern dentistry. He preceded the name that a lot of you have heard in GV Black. The Pierre Fouchard Academy has an award that they allow each school to present for leadership and service and doing things that make the better institution. The individual who receives this is going to a GPR at Lincoln Hospital here in New York City next year. It is my pleasure to give our yearbook co-editor, Gina Marie Cuchara, the Pierre Fouchard Academy Award. You may wonder where that toothbrush came from. Several years ago, there's a tradition at Columbia at the main or south campus, as some of us would rather call it, uh, that at that moment, every, every school, when they're introduced for their degrees, throws something. The business school throws monopoly money, um, journalism, shredded newspapers. We used to throw toothbrushes, but I suddenly realized you're going to put somebody's eye out with that thing. So we bought these large toothbrushes. Um, the dean doesn't know what the plot is, but they're going to try to get down to the Today Show and stand in line or outside the window <laughs> waving these. They, uh, some of our students were on the front page of the New York Times with those toothbrushes several years ago, so it's become quite their tradition. I just keep reminding them they're very fragile. You have seen the excellence that is our student body here. These individuals, in spite of their youth, have worked extremely hard, extremely well, and have done the right thing. Something that we all question, does it happen in this day and age? It certainly has happened with them. Their futures are bright. They will all give us big, huge checks someday for the alumni fund. <laughs> and I again invite you all out to have a reception with us out here in the foyer outside this. And Gansa Hapmidnar, Danyavad, Sheshe, Gracias, Merci, and thank you. I have, excuse me, I've made an error here. We have something a little different this year. This is the second person that the class invited to speak. You didn't mean to leave this off. We have, as you know, group leaders in our senior practice program. This is one of our group leaders. She has not been at this position the longest of that group, but she has clearly been one of those who's had the most impact on this class in particular. And it's my pleasure to belatedly introduce Dr. Jessica Hilberg with remarks. <laughs> my apology. Yeah, okay, I'll really talk fast now. Let's hurry up. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Davis. Hi, everybody. So I just first want to say I was in touch with Dr. Evangelitis, and she sends her congratulations and her very best wishes to all of you and uh, your families and friends. So you guys know how to have a good time. You know how to dance. That was a lot of fun the other night. Congratulations, class of 2010. Special congratulations to today's award winners. Well, thank you for asking me to speak today. I think most of you know how much I can talk, so I hope I'm not repeating myself as I address you here. What do I want to tell you? I want to tell you to be able to sleep at night. As I hope for my own children, I hope that you have a life that allows you to do that. A life where your days are spent in a profession that will fulfill you. I know it may not feel like that right now. In fact, I think that PTDSD, or post-traumatic dental school disorder, <laughs> can take a while to get over. But you will get over it. And then you'll realize that you really do enjoy working with your hands and helping people, among other things like the ones you said at your interview about four and a half years ago. 
and you'll realize that you have learned to be a professional. I hope you'll be the kind of professional that can sleep at night because you know that you did the best that you could for your patients, that you're understanding why you're doing what you're doing, that you're a lifelong learner and will continue broadening your knowledge base as you grow, and that you care about your patients, your families, your friends, and yourselves. You can sleep at night because you conduct yourselves truthfully and honestly. And even if things do not go as planned, you can cope and figure out a new direction. You will not be perfect. No one is. You will make mistakes. We all do. Learn from them and try not to make the same ones more than once. Try not to be confused and frustrated when you come across what seem to be conflicting opinions. Just as I'm sure you found in clinic, not all dentists think alike. Know that one of us is not the right one and that the others are wrong. There are usually choices. What we all hope is that we have taught you to think of these options, consider them, present them eloquently to your patients, and choose the course you are most comfortable with. Don't think there's only one way to do something, especially as you progress in your careers, your lives, and encounter new challenges. You have been so much fun to share VC7 with. I love talking about dentistry, practice management, my children, you, your lives, shopping, houses, relationships, and most of all, maybe, my hair. <laughs> I wish all of you the lives that you hope for. Thank you, class of 2010, for the privilege of addressing you today, and congratulations. And that's why they love it. Please join us out in the lobby. Thank you.